Howdy, howdy, y'all. This is Clara Lawrence, and we're coming from my hotel room. Okay, yeah, I know it's a weird start, but let me explain. Well, actually, first, let me explain what I'm doing. I brought a couple projects with me to, yeah, kill some time. I was going to have some alone, alone time in the room. So I thought I would bring a couple pieces uh, to do some drawing on. And this is actually tray number two that I'm working on. And I wanted to, I was looking at this piece for a while. And I really, really like this pink glow that comes out on this on the side there. And I thought I would incorporate it around his mouth opening. So I was kind of hoping to give that simulation of, you know, some smoldering heat about, he's about to just unleash the flame. So there's a lot of heat coming from the mouth and such. So that's why the position is there. And I am happy to say that the final piece, ah, ha, ha, love the pink zone. Turned out so good. Okay, so on to my story. So, yes, everybody has had a weird 2020 year, um, and we're no exception. I've got two boys in college. Um, one of them is going to be a senior this year. The other one is going to be a sophomore. And they go to Stephen F. Austin down in Nacogdoches, Texas. And, of course, everybody's up for a debate Excuse me, on what to do. And... They did offer some of the classes online. Uh, some of the classes are in person, combination with a lot of online work. And I left it up to both the boys individually. Um, one of them decided to take classes from ACC and just knock out the rest of his core classes. And the other one decided he wanted to go in and be in person. And to be really honest with you, I think that was a really wise choice for him. He's going into physics, and that is one-on-one -on -one in the lab work. So that's why we are, well, I'm up here mainly because, well, let's just say post office was having some issues with the check, and it was taking them way over a week to get there. So I'm assuming the check is kind of lost in the mail for now, and I need to get them a check up there real quick because my boy's coming in on Saturday. And if they don't get their check until Friday, there is going to be no classes for this boy. He's going to be kicked out. Nope, can't do it this year. So I went there and stayed an extra day, and that's why the extra room, extra time in the hotel room. So my boy Brian is all set up and ready to go. And so now I'm doing some playtime. And I'm using a combination of a couple different things here. So the first line art you saw me put down, I did that with a chalk marker. So the reason for doing the chalk marker is to just line out how I'm going to do my drawing, my design, if I've got any overlay uh, issues like with scales, horns, or whatever have you not that I can go ahead and draw them without having to worry about anything, erase the middle portion on the stuff that is overlaid, and then uh, when everything is all said and done, I put a quick line of the, uh, these are some of the Molotov pins, uh, which has a really high sheen, kind of, it, it, it's basically, it's like painting with liquid mirrors, is just, this stuff is wild. So I hit it real quick with one of the thin, thinner pins just to get my lines down. And then when that's dry, which it dries pretty quick, um, I'll go in with a uh, paper towel with a, just a little bit of water, clean it up all over, go immediately with another towel that's completely dry, dry it off. And if I need to re you know, repeat the process, I go ahead and do that. Um, I happened onto this two-step way of doing this. So... Okay, I'm kind of missing a point there. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so I did a skinny line in the Molotov, came in with a thicker line to really set these shapes into place. Um, I'll do some light, just playing with light hatchwork lines, and that starts to give these um, line shapes some form to them. And just it's, it's amazing how just a little bit of 
line, extra line detail can really add that form to it. Now, as you can see, the shapes kind of disappear in the background with the busyness of the resin. And this is something I, um, I kind of picked up from Jeff Thornton. He does a lot of line work with his pens, but he has his own unique style to him. But when you put that black right next to that chrome, it really makes that whole thing just pop right off the page. And I like this one-two combination. Um, I did it with another tray back several months ago. Well, I kind of did a spontaneous tray with a, a horse on it on Artapalooza. And I did the chrome work and I was super happy with the drawing. But when I stood up, it kind of melded into the background. I'm like, um, what can I do? What can I do? And of course, all you see is, you know, the screen's reduced on the YouTube live at the time. You couldn't really see it on the screen. I was like, okay, it's not standing out. I need to do something. And that's why I picked up the, uh, uh, the black marker and started adding the lines next to the chrome lines. So this is actually a Posca pen, and it's a black acrylic paint. And so I'm just adding just literally a line next to my outline shapes. Now, I will go in with the very outside edge of the line and work on thickening up those lines a lot more. Um, and it's a style that I've done with my line art illustrations for a long time, and I, I don't know, it's kind of become something second nature to me and it, it brings out the character of the illustration. And I really like it. Um, it also is kind of a almost like a mock kind of uh, cut line uh, lino cut type of illustration except for it's very loose, it's very rough and it's kind of a fast technique as well but it just adds a nice touch of detail which I really like. So I had a little bit of fun with the teeth this time. As if you notice there's several teeth overlaying each other uh, and I just really wanted to give them a really snarly looking bite to them. Oh this little circle thing I have to tell you. So Jeff was doing I don't remember what piece it was. He had it on the turn turntable and he was doing some drawing and then all of a sudden he just started zzz, zzz, zzz on this border and doing this circle. I was like, whoa, I haven't seen that before. And that made a permanent mark in my memory. And I'm like, I got to try this. And so since then, I've been encouraging it, including them in most of my uh, line art illustrations in the tray, especially with the circular background. I love, love, love having shapes pop out of the boundary. It's gives it all, even though it's line work, it gives it a three-dimensional kind of feel to it. So what I'm doing here is remember every shape has some kind of a highlight shape with that chrome. And what I'm doing here is, is now starting to play with the shadowing uh, of the shapes. Trying to bring those front scales even more in front. The medium and the, you know, in in the background a little bit and the ones that are behind it really in the background and then you've also got the scales on the neck you know for the jawline that even falls even more in the background so I wanted to be able to give that depth without overwhelming it with the too, too much shading so that's why I do the, the really coarse um, hatch work on this piece so we're almost done. Now I need to do a flood coat on both of these trays, but this one, since it has only had one coat of resin on it, I could do get away with two coats. So I'm still in debate on whether or not I'm going to add any additional effects to this over top of the dragon or if I'm just going to keep it a nice, just a flood coat of clear uh, epoxy resin on top of it. So yeah, give me, hey, down below, if, you, if you've followed me this far into the video, which I really, really appreciate, 
give me um, uh, your opinion down below whether or not I should just do a clear coat or add a little bit of extra smoke coming out of his mouth or, you know, some kind of an effect to give it some of the additional depth to it. So that would be great. Of course, you know, I can either choose to go with it or not, but you never know. Sometimes people come up with really, really good ideas. I'm, I'm even contemplating a third option, but um, we'll have to see if that follows through or not. It's amazing. Just that little bit right by the eye really gives that, that horn the um, shape to go into the skull, and it makes that little area nice and rounded just by adding that little bit. It's not a ton of shading, but it is enough. Okay, here's that thickening outline that I was talking about with the illustration that really makes this illustration pop also an additional amount from that really because I've got a really busy background with that resin pour. You know, I've got purple swirling, I got white and gray swirling, I got the pinks going on and I think there's even a little bit of a, like a brassy bronze color in there too and so there's a lot happening there and it's like how am I going to make a line art dragon pop out of all that busyness. Well, this is one way to do it. You just go in there and add a little bit of extra. And it's occasionally I'll pull it into the illustration, like you saw me do an extra brown line in there. But I usually keep it mostly on the outskirts. Occasionally I will go in, like in this case, um, that's going along a jawline. And so this is a ma major feature in this this dragon. You get you have your nose, your teeth, the eyes, the shape of the the head, and the, kind of the jawline is part of that shape of the head, and it really helps to bring that out. I really want to also keep the points of those teeth to make them look nice and menacing and sharp. So even though it looks like it could be possibly just like a really sloppy detail uh, and super simple to do, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. And some of it's instinct by now because I've done quite a few illustrations. But some of it is a little bit of a process of thinking. It's like, how would this look if I didn't do it? You know what I mean? And just a little bit more because there's that area is kind of dark and I want it to pop up a little bit. All right. So what do you guys think? Should I do a clear coat only or with a little extra effect and then a clear coat on top? So let me know in the description below. So thanks for hanging out with me while I do my doodling in the hotel room. So hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. But also check the links in the description below for any products I use. And also the Etsy store because I'm starting to load it up with some artwork. I've had some friends that have been pushing me, hey, you need to get out there. So I did it. I put some pieces up and I'm going to be putting some pieces up. Um, hopefully real soon some really new ones and that might include these guys. Later y'all.